Good morning, young people, and happy Sabbath. Welcome again to the early teen Sabbath school class at the Daughter of Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today's lesson is entitled, Nobody Understands, and it can be found in the book of Job, chapters 3 up to chapter 37. So, let's get started with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And as we continue to learn about this warfare, this controversy between God and Satan, we ask that you will open up our minds that we may be receptive to what we are hearing. May we study to show ourselves approved. But more importantly, Father, may we reflect on what we are learning and studying so that we can be more like you. Help us to be attentive. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right. So our power text says, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And that can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12. Our PowerPoint, it says God's love remains the same even when we fail to see the big picture. So young people, I want you to remember the title of the lesson. And I also want you to remember the text in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, and this PowerPoint that God's love is the same when we fail to see the big picture. So our story today, it's about Job. We talked about him in the last lesson. And remember, he lost everything that he had because of the devil going to the council meeting and saying that Job would not acknowledge or worship God if he took everything away from him. And then a second time, he went back to the meeting and said, if you touch his body with infirmity, infirmities, then he will definitely curse you and die. And so we're continuing on with the story because the last we left off, he basically shaved his head and he basically mourned his children as well as just tried to get some relief from the sores that he had all over his body. So today we're going to be dealing with some of his friends who come to comfort him. They didn't understand exactly what was happening to Job any more than Job could explain. Probably even less. But God decided to be patient with all of them. And he was waiting for the right time to clear up all of their misunderstandings. So in this picture, you notice you see a young woman on the left side. And on the right side, you see an old woman. Now here is how you find these women. So I want you to look here. And notice, if you look at this part, this is a woman's cheek. This is her hair. This is like something over her head and a feather in her cap or whatever she's wearing there. And then her body here where she is wearing uh, some kind of coat. Now, to find the old woman, I want you to look here where the arrow is going to point. And this is the old woman's chin, okay? And so the old, old woman's chin is showing here. Here is her nose, and then this is her hair. But you look at both of them, you can probably now see the older woman in the younger woman's picture, and you can see the younger woman in the older woman's picture, or you can change them up. So this is basically about perspective, okay? When you see a picture, what perspective do you see? 1 Corinthians 13, 12 has said, we see through a glass darkly, okay? We know in part. So we know a part of this picture when we are looking for one specific thing, it's a young woman, 
But then when we fully know, we can see the young woman and the older woman in the picture together. So, have you ever felt that your whole world was falling apart and that even those closest to you were against you? And to make things worse, you felt that everyone was watching you. Well, welcome to Job's world. And it's going to tie into the perspective that we just used in this picture. By the time Satan was finished attacking Job, this man lost everything, his home, his livestock, his wealth, his children, and now his health was gone. He was covered with oozing, painful, smelly sores. Well, one day, three of Job's friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar, came to visit him in the city dump where he sat all day. For a week, they all sat together silently. The three friends followed the custom of the time and waited for Job to speak first. Finally, Job said, May the day of my birth perish. That day, may it turn to darkness. Why did I not perish at birth and die? Eliphaz couldn't help blurting out, if someone ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Think about how many you have instructed, how you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumble. You have strengthened faltering knees, but now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged. It strikes you and you are dismayed. Blessed is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. How painful are honest words, exclaimed Job. But what do your arguments prove? Do you mean to correct what I say and treat my desperate words as when? Bildad chimed in. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. But if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. Now, what we've read so far is from Job chapter chapters 3 through 8. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. Job said this in Job chapter 9, verses 8 through 10. How then can I dispute with him? How can I find words to argue with him? He is not a mere mortal like me that I might answer him. Verses 14 through 32 of Job chapter 9. Are all these words to go unanswered? Questioned Zophar. If you put away the sin that is in your hand, and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then, free of fault, you will lift up your face, you will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Job replied, keep silent and let me speak. Then let come to me what may. Though he slay me, Yet will I hope in him. Job said that in chapter 13, verses 13 through 15. In spite of his pain and his friends reproving words, Job remained faithful to God. He found the strength to affirm, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. Job chapter 19, verse 25. The three old friends retreated into silence. 
A younger man named Elihu had listened to what was being said. Because, because of his age, he had to wait until everyone else finished speaking. And he said in Job chapter 15, verses 11 through 14, are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? What are mortals that they can be pure? None of the men understood what had happened between God and Satan. Each one understood only a little about God. And even what they knew, they didn't completely understand. But God knew them and loved them. He knew that he would be able to help them understand more of the picture at the right time. Young people, what is your understanding of who God is? How can you best reveal his character to those in your world? When is it okay to question God? Job and his friends had incomplete pictures of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 tells us about God's love and grace and how God's love can help us through worries and problems we have. It was written for people who needed to know that God's love is never ending. God's love is there for us in good times, in bad times, when we're happy, when we're sad, and even when we're having doubts. So young people, think of God's love as a bright light. His love shines through the darkest problems or fears that we have. So our PowerPoint reminds us this one thing. It said, God's love remains the same even when we fail to see the big picture. I hope you are enjoying these lessons. Enjoy the journey because God will respond to help them to understand him better. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this story. And as we continue the journey, we ask your blessing on us. Help us to understand exactly what the friends' misunderstandings are because it's about them not fully understanding you. Thank you that Job remained faithful and he continues to give you the praise, honor, and glory even in the midst of his suffering. May we learn to do that, Lord, even though we are not suffering in that same regard. Continue to help us to study, bless us, and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you, young people, for joining in. I look forward to meeting with you on next week as we continue our study. Bye-bye.